my beautiful friends out there. Welcome. I'm so thrilled to have you guys with me and welcome to all of the new viewers. My name is Odessa. I'm the mystic intuitive healer and I deliver messages through the cards that help you to awaken, heal, align and grow. Now, before we get started, I just want to say thank you to all of you out there that have been on this journey with me. As I grow my channel and I deliver these messages to you, I've been posting on YouTube for two years now, and I just can't believe how far this little channel has come. And it is so encouraging to see so many of you come back week after week, not just because you support me, which I am so grateful for, but it's so encouraging to see you diving into your own journey of self-discovery and spiritual growth. I'm just so grateful to be part of it. So thank you, thank you, thank you. So in today's reading, I'm going to be looking at how you are shocking people, and I am so excited for this topic. It just immediately felt right. So I have three piles for you to select from. Pile number one has the citrine point and a shard of mirror. Pile number two has this white eagle feather is what my guides keep referring to it as. I always thought it was a hawk feather. Now, if anyone out there is an expert on birds and might know what species this came from, I would love to know. It's all white and then there are some really light brown bars at the top of the feather. So you can let me know in the comments if you have more info on that. Pile number two also has this polished river stone. And then pile number three has the gold dip seashell, the white candle wrapped with twine. So I'm going to give you guys a close up of the items in the cards so that you can select your pile and I will see you at your reading. Hi, pile number one, welcome back. So in case you missed the intro, this is a reading where I'm gonna be revealing how you are shocking people right now. You guys selected the citrine point and the shard of mirror. So I suspect that this reading is gonna have something to do with abundance, manifestation, and abundance and manifestation can be connected to you bringing forth change or something new into your life in many different forms. So it could be that this is related to your wealth and prosperity, but it could also be connected to the growth or a creative idea that's influencing people or yourself in a different way. But it's also related back to mirroring. There is something that you are reflecting back to the world possibly even connected to the shadow elements that others display around you, and you are mirroring that back to people. That is strongly coming forward with these two elements. So let's see what your cards have to say. So the first card you received is, it's time to take action, new moon in Aries. Yeah, there is something that you are physically doing. It might not literally be an action. It could be something to do with your energy. There is this forcefulness, this sort of um, assertiveness, possibly from the perspective of others. They might even see it as aggressive. Aries is the first sign of the zodiac. So sometimes it can feel like new soul energy or young soul energy. It's... Um, an energy that's really connected to physicality and being very proactive and determined. In some cases, it can be linked with being stubborn, but it is this realization, this knowing that you sometimes have to push hard to get things to move forward or change. And with it being the new moon, this is something that you are birthing. Like the new moon is the start of a new cycle and it's slowly moving towards a full moon. So there's something that's being gained. So 
this card is interesting and we'll see how that plays out. You might have strong Aries placements in your chart or the people that are most closely affected by this, you know, shocking transformation that you're going through. They might be closely linked with Aryan energy. Then you received surrender. Surrender your need to control the outcome. Just be with life in the present moment. Interesting. So this might be a philosophy of yours. This might be part of the transformation, going away from this feeling like you have to force things and push things to surrendering to receive, which is transformational. Like, honestly, that the... The two major arcana cards that really speak about um, manifestation are the high priestess and the magician. And the magician is linked with divine masculine energy and divine masculine energy is more linked to this energy of Aries where it's like you have to take action, be bold, make swift moves. You have to sort of analyze the energy around you and you're going to physically be doing things or saying things, or thinking things to make something happen. Whereas the high priestess is an energy of having confidence in your direct knowing, having confidence that your intuition is guiding you in the right direction, and you're being asked to take steps for a higher purpose and anything that's meant for you will come to you and although you recognize that you have to take steps you're going to surrender you're not necessarily going to try and you know force that door open so well, there is some duality here there's some contrast here which is really interesting so then you received ghost orchid phantoms and memories intangible things so Going back to that shadow energy, that's what this makes me think of. This could be talking about you potentially um, coming forward in a different form than people remembered you in the past. This could also be that you are reflecting back to people things that they don't want to remember, things about themselves that they thought they had released. Um, things that they might even have shame around and you are reflecting that back to them. You're like, oh, you are having trouble making the kind of money that you want. Well, why do you say yes to everyone for everything that they need and put no energy into yourself and they, they don't want to hear those kinds of things. That's just one example. Maybe that relates to you. Maybe it doesn't. But this could also be talking about you having some sort of transformation from, you know, this sort of energy of the shadow, this feeling of the out, external world controlling you more than the internal world. So we'll see how that relates because I feel like there's more that's going to come forward with that. Then you got the Chiromancer delivering news collaboration and there is the water elements on this card. So there's some sort of news that you're delivering to people. It has something to do with your intuition. You are tapped in. This is where I'm saying, like, I feel like you've been, you've leveled up. You've transformed from the magician to the high priestess. And it has nothing to do with gender. Men, women, it doesn't matter how you identify it. You're going to have both energies within you. And... Uh, those cards don't represent our identity. They, they represent energy. So you've leveled up and you are now delivering truth to people. And it feels to me like some of these people are completely shocked by this transformation because they saw you potentially as somebody who is either maybe aggressive, maybe some of you had a reputation for being difficult or being a bully, um, but that could have been purely projection. I want you to know that anything that comes forward isn't necessarily, when it comes to like people's perceptions of you, doesn't mean that it's true. It just means that that's how they're perceiving things, but there, you know, are three ways of looking at a situation, right? There is your perspective, there's the other person's perspective, and then there's the perspective of spirit, right? And so 
I mean, I would lean into what spirit has to say, honestly, but I'm going to try and give you an overview of all of the energies. Um, but for some of you, you might have actually been more in this surrendering energy, but in like a sort of a weakened state where it was like people pleasing energy and you are now stepping into your power. You know, you're still surrendering to the universe to allow the things that are meant for you to come forward and be gifted to you. But you're you're not going to allow people to cross your boundaries, take advantage of you, or throw you off course. That really is coming forward strongly. And you're ready to collaborate with those that are seeking the truth is what's coming forward. Like, there's a palm with all these astrology symbols on the palm. Like, you're able to give people guidance. Like, you definitely seem to have spiritual gifts. I would say that you are likely a shadow worker, which is the way that I refer to an individual that ends up having to deal with a lot of karmic lessons. Now, I'm not saying they're your lessons. You know, there's many different players when it comes to balancing out energy or otherwise known as karma. You might be playing the role as a master teacher but you don't even realize that that's what you're doing, right? Because there's certain veil of, of illusion or forgetfulness that comes over us when we're born into this reality. So you might not recognize that. There might be times in your life where you're like, why does everything have to be so hard? Why, why does everyone have to like see me in this light when I know that I'm someone else? And it's, it's all because of this projection and illusions. And people might have even sort of like disliked you or been sort of like projected onto you and bullied you to a certain degree because people do not like the mirror being held up to their face. But spirit moves through us to use us as tools to help awaken others. So whether they like it or not, if that's what you were doing, that's what you were guided to do, which doesn't make it any easier on you. It's it's difficult. But I hope that if you have an awareness, if this is resonating with you, what I am saying, I'm hoping that that awareness will help make things easier. Now, what's strongly coming forward from spirit right now is you are not required to suffer through that. You know, like you only have to hold the mirror up to people's face for as long as it takes for the message to trigger them right? They have a choice in how they're going to react. They can either react with curiosity and openness and a willingness to look at their own wounds because that's what takes them out of their own power, right? Like when someone triggers you, it's a signpost pointing to where your triggers are, where your shadow is. And what is the shadow? The shadow is the aspect of self that either others reject in us or we are rejecting in ourselves. It is not a part of ourselves that we are supposed to be rejecting and cutting away. It's not negative in any way. It is a part of ourselves that we have been shamed for at some point in time. So all you need to do is to play the role, be your natural self. They're automatically going to be triggered if they're not ready to awaken. And let their spirit guides take care of the rest. You don't have to continue on that journey. So if you're in a situation where you're with someone who is, you know, perpetually triggered by you, you can exit that because the work has already been done, right? The mirror has already been held up to their face. You've delivered the news is what I am saying. So you got a new beginning. Yeah, there's something about, and there's the sun and the moon on this card as well as this waterfall. And there's the silhouette of a whole bunch of birds in the air. Now, I don't know what kind of birds they are. They just appear black. So they could be a crow or a raven. And those particular birds are linked in mythology to delivering messages from beyond. But they're also directly connected to the, like, the underworld, the um, shadow realms as well. Um, and it looks like you're pointing the way through to the next stage of reality for these people. You're opening up a doorway. You're delivering this news that is painful for them, right? It's, it is showing them something 
that is not serving them and it has something to do with how they are either manifesting like the actions that they're taking to try and make things happen in their lives but possibly also what their focus is like are they focused more on the needs and desires of other people and they're sacrificing themselves because if that's the case they're not gonna be able to manifest what they truly desire because they're telling the universe that they're not worthy of being on equal footing with others around them or are they so focused on wealth and power that they throw away everything else? They don't see other people around them as brothers and sisters that we all come from the same source. They don't see even their own family members as being on the same footing as them. They see everyone as an adversary. They see everyone as competition and they're truly strongly in sort of the shadow elements of the Aryan energy. But it feels to me like this is going to be a time of great awakening for them because if you are playing this role in their lives and you are shocking them as a result of this, this is whatever you're doing, you are not, there's butterflies on this card. I never saw that before. You're helping them to transform. I have goosebumps. You may not have always played this role in their lives. This might be relationships that you've had with people of any type it could be family members it could be you know your um lovers it could be longtime friendships co-workers it could be literally anyone in your life and you might have always sort of kept the peace with them or you know you didn't see any need to say anything else right you might have also been under this veil of illusion and you were sort of participating in the same things that these people are but all of a sudden, something shifted and changed in you. It was like you started to see things in a different light. And now you can't not see it. It's just so obvious. And it's because of your spiritual gifts opening up. Like there's been some upgrade for you. Your intuition is stronger. And now you just see where things are out of equilibrium. The calibration isn't right, right? The resonance isn't right is what your guides want me to say. It's like... Their vibration is keeping them stuck. And all they have to do is start thinking about things in a different way. And they'll be able to access all of the abundance that is through this gateway that's just waiting for them. They can have it. But what is also coming forward is do not surrender yourself or sacrifice yourself for the growth of another you know, you might think, oh, that's such a beautiful thing to do. You know, it's it's ride or die energy and you you um, are a good person. And that's the way it all we should all act. We should all want to, like, help those that are, you know, struggling. But you can't force somebody into an awakened state. They have to want to do it. They have to surrender their own you know, um, desire for power and control. They have to let that go. All of the ego stuff, they have to let that go. And you can't do the work for them. But what you can do by refusing to let go or to take a step back is you can actually regress. You can actually affect your own energy if you're in this kind of volatility for a long period of time. And you can actually regress to the point where you're back at the same stage where they were and you have to relearn all of those lessons. So don't do that to yourself because there are going to be people on the other side of this portal that are going to be willing and ready to hear what you have to say. And those are the people that you're going to be able to help. Those are the people that are waiting for you to play that role in their lives. The role that you were meant to play with these people, these people that you're shocking, you've already played. So you don't have to stick around and, you know, just take the heat is what's coming forward. And for some of you, I strongly get the sense that there's some bullying energy, people that want to silence you. It's like they, they really want to force you into a state of pain. It's like... um like an eye for an eye kind of energy. It's like, you hurt me, I'm gonna hurt you. But they don't realize that they're hurting themselves. You didn't do anything. 
You just held the mirror up to their face. It's not you. They're, that's projection. That's purely projection. You didn't do anything. You know, you, you did a great service to them so that they can finally see where this trigger is. And now they have to be brave and they have to face their own monsters. Next, you've got flag. Do not be tempted to lower your standards. What did I say? Yes, do not regress. Do not start taking steps going backwards, like stopping to say the things that are coming to your mind. Don't stop, um, you know, shining your light. For some of you, some of these people are triggered by you and it has nothing to do with, you know, harder emotions coming forward. It has to do with them being triggered by your success, all of the abundance and all of the things that you're manifesting. You're creating this beautiful life for yourself. Maybe you've already let go of a lot of the toxicity. You've already walked through the, the door. And everywhere you go, people are still, you know, completely pressed by like your just you know, being, you know, you just walk into the door and you don't even have to say or do anything. You can be like the friendliest, most like warm and open version of yourself, more open and loving than you've ever been before. And they're still upset. And that is because they have envy. They have envy for that. They, they might not even want the exact same life as you, but they feel envious of how you were able to transform into that. And they'll give themselves all kinds of narratives in their mind about how it was easy for you, or, you know, there are, you're getting preferential treatment in some way. Anything that they can convince themselves of that will allow them to not have to look at themselves. And you cannot continue to keep trying to tell them that they're wrong and continue to fight. Just it's time for some of you to literally walk away from those people. You got the Ace of Swords. Yes. So one, don't stop speaking out. Don't stop saying and thinking the way that you do. And you might need to start thinking about potentially cutting certain people or situations or even environments out of your life. Um, and there's lots of different ways that you can cut something out of your life. Obviously, there's like literally like ending a relationship or leaving a job. But you can also just put up such strong boundaries that you will not allow yourself to be sucked into any of the drama or the toxicity. Like if there's a job that you absolutely love what you're doing, you love the actual job, you just hate all the drama and everything that's going on around you, then you have to commit yourself to walking into that office, doing your work and clocking out that you're not going to try and have your work life be an extension of your personal life. You're not going to try and build relationships and friendships that go beyond the working day. You're just going to surrender to what is and focus on the work and you're going to allow spirit to take care of the rest because those people, if they need to awaken, they need to awaken and spirit will find other ways to get to them. Not, that whole burden isn't on your shoulders. Um, and that in itself will shock people too, because I get this sense that there are people around you that it, no matter what you do, you, you present your ideas and they're really upset about it and triggered by it. Then you go silent and quiet and they're triggered by that as well. The one thing that you're not supposed to do is just give in to what they want and tell them what they want to hear, because that would be enabling them. That would be telling them that they don't have to shift or change anything, but they do. There is something that's not serving them. It has nothing to do with, um, you know, what would necessarily benefit you or others, although it will benefit the entire environment, whatever that environment is, whether it's your family that you're connected to with these people or whether it's work or your community or whatever, it will positively affect everyone around them, but it will 
the main thing is it's really going to affect them positively. Like to not have that weight on their shoulders at all times where they have to like feel like they're in competition with everyone and that, you know, they have to constantly be scheming is the energy I'm getting. Like they need to be bigger and better than everyone else. And they're, they're going to reach the top of the mountain first where everything has to be this like unhealthy competition to prove that they're worthy. And it's like, they are worthy. You know that. They just don't know it. Like they are worthy as they are, even if they had nothing, even if the manifestations never came into being, they are still worthy. And to be perfectly honest, some of these people are going to lose things because they've been gifted things and they're feeling like it's still not fulfilling and they're still feeling like they need to take from others. And it's, that's never going to solve the problem. The whatever they externally possess is never going to fill the void. The void is there until they integrate the shadow. Next, you got, oh my God, you got the control card. And this has um, Jupiter on it, card number 10. So it's talking about nearing the ends of cycles. And we also have uh, Sagittarius on this card. So Good luck, abundance, talking about cycles. And Sagittarius is really about like looking at the larger picture, like the bigger picture here. Like, and there's literally like this godlike figure sitting on top of the earth and all of these angels. Like, it is time for them to learn how to surrender, to let go of this need to constantly be able, like this constant need to control things. And this ability, I, that's what was starting to come out. Like the direct channeling was saying the ability to control people. So for some of you, this might be like toxic bosses or maybe uh, toxic parents. It feels like somebody that's in a position of authority. So it could be like, you know, the your spiritual teacher, like a priest or a rabbi or like someone, it seems like someone that's supposed to be of authority, a teacher, uh, it could even be your medical team, like your doctor. It's like someone is like leaning into all of the vices connected to control. Like they're doing things just because they can. Some of these people, like, might even have sort of a sadistic streak, like they just like to puppet master people, and that's kind of creepy and sad. Um, if that's the case, if that's the energy, like when you heard that, you're like, yes, that's my person, that's the thing that's going on in my life. Those are the people that are so, so far in the darkness that it, you need to just take a step back, because they, they will re truly force you into a place of, whoa, my, I, I don't know if you guys just saw that, but like my muscle just spasmed. So the energy that I get from that is that those energies, whatever is connected to that does not want you to know this information. Wow. That, that has not happened to me in a really long time. So, um, you need to be careful of spiritual attacks. And you need to take a step away from those people because they will, you know, use manipulation and control tactics to get you to step back into the shadow. You know, you will start to lose some of your connection with spirit. Not that you can't regain it, but, you know, you've worked so hard to get to where you are. Then the next card is authority. Like I was saying, and it's also card number 10. And we've got Mars on this card and we also have Sagittarius. So that is completely wild. Um, yeah, there's this Mars energy that is like, I'm the, the king. I'm in control. What I say goes and no one better question, you know, my position. You know, I'm they people that just don't want to be held accountable either. They, the sense that I also get is that for some of these people, they like to have the authority, like the title. They like to have the control, but they actually are terrible leaders. 
You know, like they don't make decisions. They don't empower people to take action. They don't inspire. They don't um, create streamlined um, supports for the people that they're working with. And they're just sort of like lording over people. And it creates this toxic, toxic energy. And it, that will have a negative effect on them. Like karma will come in and they will end up having to lose things, which is so sad. But it's the fact that they're not even aware of this and that you're coming in and, and it's completely shocking to them. Because for some of them, like these might, like I said, they these might be people that are in positions of authority. And they think that what they are doing is perfect. They don't see that they're a toxic boss or they are, um, you know, a toxic spiritual leader or that they're, you know, out of balance as a leader within the family. They don't see any of that. They see themselves as being this powerful, abundant person that they got all of this because they earned it because they're the best. And those that don't have it, well, you know, guess you're just losers, you know, like I guess that you're just doing everything wrong. They have no awareness of the fact that a lot of this came to them as a gift so that they could learn how to find abundance within without needing all of these material possessions. And of course, the only way for them to learn that lesson is to be given everything and to have it taken away. Now, they can minimize that kind of effect on them. But that has to be a willingness to listen to the things that you're sharing with them and that you're, you're, you're showing them. Like, you have to just stand in your truth is what's strongly coming forward, though. You are shocking them. Like, this truly feels like this just sort of came out of nowhere. But um, you're, you're doing a divine service is what I'm being told. Okay, so I want to get just a couple final cards for you guys. First of all, I want to empower you. I want you to know what you need to be wary of in this situation. Because I think that there's a lot of energy shifting right now. And I want you to have the very best chance of success for you, for your own personal happiness. So what does pile number one need to be aware of or wary of? Okay. So you received sacrifice, card number seven, and naked before the stars, card number 18. Okay, so this naked before the stars is talking about this lusty energy. It can be sort of low vibrational if it's not, you know, um, grounded. It can be connected to the physical pursuit of pleasure and desire, which there's nothing wrong with that. We're in a physical body for a reason. But there are those that base their worth purely on their physicality. And there are some people that will use their physical beauty or the nice clothes or the things that they have, you know, their abundance to manipulate people. And people in authority do this a lot as well. You know, like you might be speaking out, you're saying all this truth, you're holding up the mirror, you're showing everyone the illusion of what's going on in this situation. And the, like I said, these people are really, really upset about this and they want you to stop. They don't want to see their shadow and they don't want to deal with any kind of like uprising is the word that's coming forward. So they don't want other people to start asking the same questions you are or behaving the same way you are. And they might actually try and gift you things, give you things, try and um, appease you in some way, like love bombing energy where like they hold you on a pedestal and they give you all of these gifts and they try and like wine and dine you. Or they might offer you a promotion or a raise or something like that. Or they're offering you a position of authority and power. And they think like if I, you know, sort of seduce you through your own ego, then I will be able to lord power over you again. Like 18, it uh, reduces down to the number nine. And nine in the tarot is connected to 
for me anyways, when I think about it, I think about the contrast between like the nine of swords, which is like fears and nightmares that we've brought on ourselves, but then also the nine of cups where it's connected to complete independence and fulfillment. Um, and this energy, I think, is being presented to you. You have the power to be stepping into the shadow and the nightmares or stepping into the independence and the fulfillment. Don't sacrifice yourself. Be aware of this. Be aware that if there's all of a sudden someone's like, you know, you're the best. You're amazing. You're so much better at your job or you're so much like more in tune with me than anyone else I've met before you, or you get it and no one else has ever gotten it before. That can be true, but that can also be a manipulation. It can be something that they're saying to you so that they can appeal to your ego. So don't start giving everything of yourself and not protecting yourself. Be aware of where that, what their motivation might be. You know, like really be aware of that. Okay, so next I want to give you some information about what you should be leaning into. What can you trust? This is what you need to be wary of. What can you trust? You got commitment. There are other people around you. There are other people that are committed to the same cause. This could be other family members that see things the same way as you. It could be other coworkers that see the same things as you, and they're going to be on your side. If you don't have physical people in your life that are like that, it could be part of this community here. You know, people in the comments of my videos, people that are watching other tarot readings or Possibly you're interested in um, some other things that um, you could build a community there. You know, like there is this strong sense of it being online, though. Like there is this strong sense, like maybe these are things that you want to start talking about online. Maybe you want to set up a TikTok or something else. You know, like there is a commitment to the cause is what's coming forward. So lean into that. But of course, What's just came forward is the proof is in the pudding. You need to be aware of what, what are people's actions. Don't just listen to what they're saying because people say all kinds of things. You know, like our, our thoughts and our words is sort of like the beginning of the manifestation, but they have to ground it into the physical by action. They have to actually do things. So what Spirit is saying is be very cautious and um, take your time with anyone that is telling you beautiful things and lean into the relationships with people that are doing beautiful things. Okay, so final advice for you guys on this situation. Okay, so you got charity with Saturn um, and Cancer, card number four. You are divinely guided by spirit to do this. You're helping, what I just heard is break generational curses. So a generational curse, for those of you who don't know what that is, it is an action or belief system that is passed down from family line to family line to family line, like generation upon generation. And it can be based in trauma. It can be based on something that happened to your ancestor. And then there's a narrative built around that. And then actions follow accordingly. So, you know, you know, your great, great, great grandfather took a risk on a business and they lost it all. And now every generation after that has a fear of going into the unknown, pursuing their dreams and ambitions. And everyone is sort of like rattled with this fear and they all lean into a traditional you know, nine to five job and they're all miserable. Like that is a generational curse. It's just because of something bad happened to someone in the past doesn't mean it's going to also happen to you. And there's lots of, that's just one example. It can also be like thoughts that we have, like, um, you know, like, like, People from our community are not attractive or intelligent or successful or will never make something of themselves. You know, like there's these like these broad sweeping ideas that can influence us as well. 
and you are helping people to realize that that is not truth. And like I was saying, you have spiritual gifts. Like there are things that are coming to you. And I feel like you have clear audience. You have the gift of clear hearing and you need to be paying attention to what you're hearing around you. Like spirit might be communicating with you through songs. So if all of a sudden you find yourself humming some song that, you know, you weren't even really aware of how it popped into your head, think about what the lyrics are saying, because it could very well be a spiritual message to you. And you are meant to give back. You are meant to give charity in this life, but you're not meant to sacrifice yourself. There should be excitement along this journey. You are a herald of truth. On this card, there is Mercury and Gemini with the number three. Um, we are about to have a new moon in Gemini. This There might be, this is a timeless reading. So even if you see this after I post it, the messages that are coming forward will relate to what's going on in your life. But this particular new moon might have a dramatic effect on you. Sorry, I said new moon, but it isn't a new moon. It is a full moon. So this full moon might have a dramatic effect on you. Um, there might be some things that are going to be leaving your life, or there's going to be things that are leaving these other people's lives. Like you're going to be showing them, you are currently showing them that there is more than one reality going on at the same time. There is their vision of self. And then there is your, like the external world's vision of how they are behaving. You know, like another example of that is like, they might experience a lot of people wearing masks around them. So that's why they're not aware that people find them to be toxic or overbearing or, you know, on the wrong path. Like, you know, there's this energy of greed around this, that they're really motivated by greed and it's, it's, a, and lust, a greed for wealth, power, a lust for power. Like it is pretty low vibrational. Um, and you are this herald that on horseback coming through, you know, spreading the news, but you are this energy of the rider, which means that you deliver the news, but you keep on moving. You're moving on to the next town. Like you're not staying, you know, like you're not investing in this reality. Not that there's any shame with that, but if you stayed in this vibration with these people, you would become like them. And spirit just really doesn't want that to happen for you. So that is how you are shocking people. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the reading. I would love to know how this relates back to you and your life. You can let me know in the comments. And I do do personal and private readings. So if you would like to work with me, you can go to my website, odessamall.com. All of my booking information and services are available there. I do tarot card readings, obviously but I do lots of other things too. And I am sending all of you so much love. I look forward to seeing you guys in the next reading. Take care. Hi, pile number two, welcome back. So you pick the white eagle or hawk feather and the river stone. So in this reading, I'm going to be revealing to you how you are shocking people. And the sense that I get from these two items is that you are on a path of ascension. That You are slowly getting to a point where you can really see things from a higher perspective. This could be indicating that you have strong spiritual gifts as well, that you have a connection with spirit, you're able to channel, maybe you can connect with people's past loved ones, um, and you're bringing in that information, grounding it into the physical. Um, you might also just be able to see truth that others can't see. And you're bringing forward a connection with your intuition and empathy because, of course, as I said, this stone is a river stone. So it's connected to water. 
Um, and it feels to me like you might be an older soul, a mature soul at the very least, that you have been forged um, over an extended period of time. Because of course these stones, they only get smooth like this because the water is rushing over them and they're being ground down, sanded down by the sand around them over an extended period of time. So whatever this truth is that you're able to see, you had to go through a lot to be able to get to this point. So let's get into your cards and find out exactly how you're shocking people. Okay, so the first card that you received is the storyteller and it has the water symbol and it says viewpoints and control. Interesting. So the depiction on the front of the card is people creating these shadow puppets or shadow um, puppetry with their hands. And the sense that I get is that you are now getting to a point where you're trusting your intuition and you're able to see the illusions and the projections of other people, maybe different um, organizations or corporations, um, that you're able to see how others can, through their own actions or sleight of hands, right? It's hands creating these shadows on the wall. Through their sleight of hand, they're able to make you see something that isn't really there. They're using this projection to gain control over you. And you are starting to see it for what it really is. And I think that that's changing the way that you react to people in certain situations or the actions that you're taking, or maybe you're talking about some of these things. And it's completely shocking people. In some cases, you might actually be communicating with people and sharing your insight and what you're seeing and they're shocked by what you're revealing. I don't get the sense necessarily that people are like aggressive towards you. I feel like you are delivering these truths in a gentle way, but they're shocked by the information that they're receiving. Then you receive the beauty card. So you might have gone through a major glow up and that's really shocking to people. Maybe you are looking really different, but this might also be an internal glow up where all of a sudden you just are not buying into the perspective that others have around beauty. You've done some healing and you're starting to see the beautiful light inside you you're starting to do possibly mirror work is what I refer to it as, which is looking in a mirror and pointing out to yourself all of the beautiful things about yourself, whether you believe it in the moment or not, just repeating that you are beautiful, intelligent, vibrant, whatever it is that you want to embody in this life. You just keep repeating it to yourself as you look at yourself. And initially it will feel so off. You will have a little voice in your mind that's like, no, that's not true. But eventually you override that. You're able to change the neural pathways in your own mind because our mind is programmable. You know, the thoughts that you have and even your own perceptions of reality are rooted in the experiences that you had in the past. So if your family was telling you that you're not attractive over and over and over again, you could literally be a supermodel to everyone else and you would still see yourself as ugly. And obviously those things can't possibly be true. Every single person on this planet has value. Everyone has beauty within them. But sometimes we have a distorted perception of self and that can manifest in the physical, you know, like you can have limitations in your life that bar you from fitting into a certain beauty standard. But it looks like you're questioning the standard. Like who decided that that's what beauty is? You know, like <laughs> if, they, if someone decided it, then we can decide that it isn't that way. We can make it more inclusive. We can open things up. We can change 
the way we feel about ourselves, at least. And that is completely shocking, people. Like, there might have been people that used, even in your own family, where now it's starting to feel like the energy that's coming forward is a little more passive aggressive. It's feeling a little bit more like covert narcissism, possibly, where people are offering guidance, advice, or they're making these um, comments, or even they're making compliments. They're sort of backhanded compliments, like, oh, you know, you look so much prettier when your hair is up. You know, I'm so glad that you're wearing it that way now. And what they're implying is that you've looked like garbage to them every other time, you know, like, oh, it really brings out, like, there's just things like that that people will say where you don't really, like, really analyze it, really, like, take stock of what they're saying. It's easy to miss it. But it's those little comments that can like bury deep. It's like um, breathing in. Um, the the sense that I get is like the like foam insulation, all the little fiberglass. Like you're always supposed to wear a mask around that because if you don't, you'll in you'll breathe in that fiberglass and it will embed in your body. You don't even know it's there, and it will you know obviously hurt your health. It's that kind of energy, like. Though those little comments are unnoticed, but they bury themselves deep inside you, and slowly it ruins your sense of self. Then you got the manipulation card. Oh my god! So, what did I say? This has um Jupiter as well as Scorpio in the number eight on it. Um, you have definitely faced your fair share of manipulators toxic people, um, and I think that you're starting to see the truth. The sense that I get is you're, like, no longer influenced by just the projection or the illusion. It's, like, this sense of, like, the Wizard of Oz, like, the Great Oz. Oh, he's so magical. He's so powerful. But then he ends up just being this little old man behind a curtain who literally has no magical abilities at all. He is a showman, you know, he's a scam artist. Um, and you're starting to see things that you did not see before. And some of these manipulators might get really upset by that. And I get the sense that the next year with this number eight, um, so 2024 might be a big year for you. This is a timeless reading. So whenever you see this, it's the next year. Um, that you're going to be embarking on that will be a major turning point for you. But I do feel the sense that there might be some pain in the truths that come forward. Like there's going to be some illusion that's like shed or released. You're going to start seeing things in a different way. And that is going to bring in more blessings, but it can also bring in the judgments of other people. Like that shocking energy might make them uncomfortable and they, they turn on you or they try and get you in line again, like by breaking you down in some way, like, you know, just trying to gaslight you and make you feel terrible about whatever, you know, epiphany you come to, whatever growth, like some people like those around them to stay in this depleted state. Like they want you to not feel beautiful. They want you to not feel intelligent because they don't feel beautiful or intelligent. So they see the light in you. And if you're shining, they feel so small. And somehow the energy within them, um, you know, pushes them in a way to try and drag others down to their level. And it's, it's awful. You're meant to be up higher. And the next card is talking about that. You got vibration. Your vibration is being raised to higher levels. You are connected to cosmic intelligence. So with these two cards, like you probably have strong spiritual gifts. You are likely um, psychic in some way. You might have clairvoyance, which is the gift of clear seeing. Um, but 
you could have a number of different gifts. I definitely get this sense that you're channeling spirit, whether you know it or not. You might even be channeling other people's past loved ones. Then you've got Vine. Seek out information that will help you. Yeah, you've been doing research. You've been, you know, crossing your T's, dotting your I's. You're not just trusting what people say to you any longer. You're like, you know, you're doing your due diligence. Someone tells you something and you go online and you cross check the information that they're providing you. You're no longer just accepting what the media or what other people of importance in your life are telling you. And this might also be a situation where you are connecting with others online and you're sharing insights and information, which could be very empowering to you. Then you received Exilaria polymorpha, um, and it says false fears look closer. Yes, you are seeing the illusions. You're looking at life through a different lens. You're seeing how others are projecting onto you or creating false fears so that they can control you, right? It's all here with this. They are delivering a certain viewpoint. And their viewpoint is designed to have control over you. It's all sleight of hand. And you are looking closer at this. You're looking behind the curtain. And you see that little man. And, you know, the things that people have tried to pull, you know, one over you, it's not working any longer. You know, like they are trying to... I just keep seeing this image of someone trying to pickpocket another individual. They've reached their hand into the pocket and the person grabs their wrist. Like you are catching them in the act. You're catching them in the act and it's making them very uncomfortable. People are starting to feel a little bit nervous around you. Like, what are you going to pick up on? Like they, they, this is not a situation where they have any sort of ill will towards you, though. Like, I, I generally, I get the sense that people really like you. But it's like they're feeling your power. Like, there is something that you are, you're just too perceptive. You're so perceptive, they're afraid that you're going to reveal all their truths or you're going to see their schemes and you might have a lot of people around you that are scheming this might have something to do with work as well but it could have something to do with family next you got empathy and then this is card number 12 along with the moon as well as pisces so yeah you are an empath so you um you would have the psychic gift of clear sentience, which is the gift of clear feeling. You're able to pick up on other people's emotions. You are able to transmutate that energy. So that's where you have to be careful. You might actually absorb that energy into your own body and it could be very depleting to you. Um, you might also pick up on other people's wounds. Um, their shadow energy going back to the 12th house on this card and i think that for many of you you try and be a place of solace you try and be a compassionate friend and you might not have always had people around you that gave you the loyalty that you gave back to them you might actually like animals more than people because they truly are loyal um, but and the sense that I get is that this is your sacrifice. This is your cross to bear is what's being said to me. Um, but it won't always be this way. It's like you're on this ascension path. Your vibration is raising and you have to sort of shed all of the old before the new can come in. And like when spiritual people like myself and other readers talk about this, you know, I, I don't want you to get the, the impression that I'm saying that everything is just going to be done like that. No, like the shedding phase can take a really long time and it can be 
um, cyclical. Like you can go through a shedding phase, you move past a trauma, you have people leave your life. Then you can be guided into another situation where you're set up with a new cast of characters that want to do the exact same thing to you. And you have to shed all of that because you're facing the same lesson from different perspectives, right? And your whole thing is about rising above the limitations of the physical realm and grounding this higher vibrational energy, your light workers. You might even identify as being star seeds. Like I just get this sense of I'm not a, I'm not from here, you know? <laughs> like that's the sense I get. Like um you might have you might um, be neurodivergent or like on the spectrum, autism spectrum, um, and you just feel like the rules of engagement when it comes to neurotypical people and environments just don't make sense to you. And that is totally okay because you're not supposed to be like them. You're supposed to be helping them to awaken. So I would say that your clear audience might be increasing for you, or it could be your clairvoyance. There's definitely an increase in one of your gifts. So if you have felt like it's been really easy for you to like sit in meditation or visualize things and, and your manifestations come forward really easily, then it might be the clear audience, like being able to pick up on audible messages from spirit, like just, it'll, it'll be your own um, voice in your head. Like you're, you'll just know that it feels like it's coming from outside of yourself or you might have like songs playing in your mind. It, it could come forward in a number of different ways. Um, but it seems like your spiritual gifts are also really shocking people. Like how do, how does pile two know this stuff? How, how are they picking up on this? Like, why can't I, I can't trick them any longer is the sense that I get. Oh my God, you got the root card. So yeah, you are grounding the light. You are setting up a solid foundation for yourself and you know your truth. If you're not there completely yet, from the perspective of others, they think that you are and you will continue to elevate. But they see you as unshakable, unmovable, but not in a way that's like stubborn. It's like power and strength. It's not like I don't want to change just because I don't want to have to, you know, adjust. This is, I know my truth. And this is where, you know, I am meant to be. Like, that's the sense that I get. You're, you are, you're supposed to be bringing down this information and grounding the light. So if you've been called to have some sort of spiritual practice, you're, you want to do readings, you want to do something like that. This is a huge green light to you to, to take action on that. You know, give me baby steps is what I'm hearing, like a little at a time. You don't have to completely convert your whole life into that world. Um, but for others of you, it has to do with you knowing your own truth and being comfortable with that, no matter what the rest of the world is telling you or what they're thinking or, you know, like if they all want to give all of their money to different people and corporations because they've been fooled by some campaign of fear, then that's their prerogative, you know, like an example of that is, you know, buying into a 12 step, you know, skincare routine. Um, because that's the only way to look youthful. Like there's a lot that's wrong with that idea. One, why do we need 12 different products? How bad for the environment is that to, have to create all of that product? And then why is it that our ancestors looked gorgeous? They didn't have 12 step skincare routines. And what is the end goal? For us to look like we're half our age, who defined that only youth was the ideal for beauty, right? Like you're asking yourself all of those questions as well. And you're rooted in the determination that you or the conclusion that you come to. Next, you got 
Your commitment is being tested. What did I say? Yes, you might be guided back into these same situations over and over and over again because you are the truth speaker. You're the truth seer and the truth speaker. You are the storyteller. You are sharing a new narrative of all of this. You know, you're you're revealing all of the strings of this puppet show. Whereas people thought it was all real. They were like, mm, no, not so much. Now, you might not have all of the answers yet, but honestly, every single one of these lessons that you end up in, these sort of karmic scenarios, you're gaining more wisdom. And don't think for a second that karma means that it's negative. It's a balancing of energy. And you might be a player in somebody else's karmic storyline. They might be the one that needs to learn something. It doesn't mean that it isn't going to be uncomfortable for you. It will be. But it will be so rewarded. Like, it, it's a sacrifice on your part. You're doing something for the greater collective is what's coming forward. So, yes, you're you're you are being tested. And, and you're being, you know, tested so that... You can really ground this, this new skill, this new strength into your vibration as well. Like you're being prepared for success is what's coming forward. Then you receive belief in the impossible. Yeah. So you are definitely changing the way you view your opportunities for the future. You're much more positive, optimistic, maybe too for the, from the perspective of others, kind of illusionary, like they might think that you're not grounded in reality and you're, maybe you're really into spiritual subjects and maybe you are interested in what some people consider conspiracy theories and, and they just think what happened to pile number two? They just went completely off the deep end. Like they're nuts now, <laughs> but it's like, you're not nuts. You're seeing the truth. Like they are like totally like under the control of external energies, right? They are not awakened. They're not aware of their own power. It's really sad actually, but that's partially why you get faced with all of these like people that can be sort of toxic to your vibration. So you need to be careful of that as well. But the more that you believe that you can achieve and that your perspective of reality can exist, the more you add to the collective manifestation of that reality. The more people that think there doesn't have to be one particular beauty standard, everyone is beautiful, we're all sisters and brothers or we're all family, um, the more that becomes a reality. Now, with those shifts and changes, it can be painful, on a collective level as well, but so is birth, right? We come into this world and there is pain involved in that. Um, but, you know, it, it's so worth it, right? Like the pain, if you ask most mothers, they will say that after that moment, and like the pain just went away. I mean, like they were still physically in pain, but the joy of seeing their child overshadowed that, right? Like there is going to be some pain involved in this, but there's going to be a divine love that's connected to this that will overshadow the pain. And you received the energy is gaining momentum. And there's all of these birds in silhouette rising up. Yeah, you are still raising your vibration. You're not completely there yet. But people can tell that you're changing. You're dramatically changing. There's no going back. Sometimes you might want to. Like there might be times when you're like, oh my God, why do I have to be awakened? Why do I have to keep going this way? It's so much easier when <laughs> you're like not aware of like how twisted things can be <laughs> in this reality. But... <laughs> Like, honestly, if you were actually placed back in that environment, given an opportunity to just forget, 
you would not see that as a blessing. It would be so painful. You, you're you so dramatically changed at this point that um, truly there is just really no going back. You know, like you are permanently changed for the better. So now to close out the reading, I'm going to pull a couple of cards to help empower you. You know, you now are seeing, you know, how you're shocking people and as you go through the next 12 months, I want you to have the tools that you need to be able to stay the course. So with this deck, I'm going to find out what you need to be wary of, mindful of, something that you need to pay attention to that might derail you. So what? Oh, you just got two cards. Those came out fast and furious. Okay, you've got Colorless Angel, card number 10. And you got blinded to pain, card number 13. Oh my God. Okay. So what you need to be aware of is that if you allow yourself to stay in environments where there's a lot of people that are still unawakened or are manipulative and toxic in some way, you run the risk of that becoming your new normal. And I get the sense that you were in this energy in the past and now you're awakened and you're going to be tested and you might be put back into an environment to see whether the lessons stick. Are you going to exit this or are you going to stay there and slowly regress into the shadow? And you're being warned of this. So try and maintain that confidence. The mirror work I talked about, looking in the mirror, you are intelligent, beautiful, kind, you see the truth, whatever you need to say to yourself. Because if you allow the manipulations of these other people to start influencing you, you will start to give and give and give of yourself. You are an empath. Toxic narcissistic people will gravitate towards you. It's just natural. They can feel it in your energy and they just magnetize to you. Now, partially it's because energy, when it comes together, it wants to balance. So your energy is trying to pull them up to a higher vibration and their energy is trying to pull you down. So you have to be aware of that. It's, it's actually like not recommended, at least from my perspective, that empaths hang out with really, really toxic or manipulative or narcissistic people for prolonged periods of time because it will eventually start to completely change the way that you feel about yourself. And then you'll end up as this colorless angel where you're walking on eggshells and nothing feels right any longer and and you will feel hopeless and lost, aimless. Like, what am I doing? Where am I going? And it's because the veil of illusion will be back on you. She's wearing this blindfold. So don't give too much of yourself. Be aware of how you feel before you're around these people. Once you start to recognize and ask yourself like, damn, this doesn't feel like me any longer. I'm getting triggered. I'm saying this. I'm saying that. Exit. Leave. Don't stay there. You know, like that's part of the lesson is to recognize it and say, whoa, this energy is completely off. I don't vibe with this any longer. I'm out. And that then lesson complete. Close that door. Let's go on to some abundance. So let's get another card. Now I'd like to find out what you can lean into. What can you trust as you're going through this transformation? What can pile number two lean into or trust? Oh boy. Okay, interesting. So you got card number five, consciousness, a consciousness of lack. And you got, again, card number five, cycles, transformation. You can trust that you have released this energy. This is where this is going to be difficult because you will be faced with people that are like, oh, you feel that way? Well, everyone else feels this other way. You know, like, are you sure? I think that there's something wrong with you. Like, if we all feel this way and you're the only one that feels that way, then maybe it's a problem with you. No. 
It isn't. They're all asleep. They don't know what's going on or they don't want to know what's going on. Lots of these people will know exactly what's going on and they're just comfortable with the status quo and they don't want anyone rocking the boat. And so they'll gaslight you and do these power plays so that they silence you. And you have to have confidence that you know what's going on and not lose that. Um, not lean into this consciousness of lack where there's not enough and we all have to compete and it's like a dog eat dog world like and there's not enough love and and support to go around no that's not true that's not true we create our own reality like we're co-creating with the universe at all times if we all started to believe that the universe and this world was abundant and there was enough for everyone there would be, you know, like there would be new technologies that are invented to solve problems. The distribution of wealth would be different. We would all be like lending a hand to everyone else around us. It would be an entirely different reality. But <laughs> that's going to take a lot of light work to get there. But you've transformed. You've crossed this bridge. So lean into that, lean into having faith that you are no longer, you know, in this energy, you know, and that even if you can see those that flare up in you in, at certain times, in, at certain moments in your life, you can release that as well. Okay, so to complete the reading, I wanted to give your guides an opportunity to give you any final advice or tell you anything else that they want you to know. Okay, nice. This is beautiful. Oh my God, I love this. Okay, so you got the assertion card, the sun in Aries, card number one, and it's literally George slaying the dragon. Yeah, you are going to be gaining this, this um, influence is what's coming forward. Power, strength, determination you're going to be charging ahead and you're not going to have the same fear in the future that you have now potentially facing some of this manipulation now for some of you it's literally people for others of you it's like institutions or concepts that are going around and you're not going to feel fear about sharing your perspective on things your political beliefs your spiritual beliefs like just your insights into life and you're going to be slaying dragons um, first internally in self and that then it'll manifest externally where you're going to share that information with others as well. And you are definitely going to be sharing inspiring, insightful information. You got the originality card. It has Mercury, Aquarius, card number 11. There's a star at this man's third eye. You are an inventor. You are an influencer. There is definitely an opportunity here for you to shine if you so choose. Um, but even if you don't feel like you want to literally be in the public eye, the way that you express yourself, your original thoughts are making waves. They are positively affecting those around you. And it's divinely gifted to you from spirit. So lean into that. Then you've got the acquisition card, Sun and Taurus, card number two. So you might be getting some really beautiful rewards from spirit as a result of all of this work that you had to do. Because I don't think that this was just, you know, a situation that you faced recently this feels to me like it's been this like back and forth back and forth back and forth throughout your life where you're just sort of constantly being pushed to connect with your higher self like you might have had a lot of tragedy in your life you might have had a lot of people that really hurt you and you had to fight your way out of that pain and the fact that you've liberated yourself is shocking to people and you are really going to be stepping forward, going back to this beauty. Like, you know, there you're just going to be illuminated. Whether you change something or not, people are going to see you 
as achieving something glorious. There's snakes on this. You shed some old skin of yours and you're going to be around others. You're not going to be in isolation any longer. You're going to be in a community of like-minded people. This is beautiful. I hope you guys enjoyed the reading. I would love to know your thoughts on this. Um, definitely let me know in the comments. And if any of you guys are interested in working with me, I do do private readings. You can book with me if you go to my website, odessamall.com. And I do tarot card readings, of course, but I also do lots of other things as well. And you can check all of that out on my site. So I'm sending you so much love. I hope you have a wonderful day or night. And I look forward to seeing you again in the next reading. Take care. Hi, pile number three, welcome back. So you picked the seashell and the white candle. And this reading is talking all about how you shock people. So what I'm getting from these two items is that there is something about um, you possibly transforming, you potentially sharing your light more, and there is this sense of potentially cutting people off, removing people from your life, but it does feel like it's in a very gentle way. This might be a situation where your compassion, your empathy, even the aspects of you that are connected to divine feminine energy might have helped you to elevate, gain some sort of influence or affluence. There's this sense of like the um, aspects of the divine feminine being rewarded with material gain is possible for you. Let's see what comes forward in the cards. Like from this, it's one example could be People in your life never thought that you would ever achieve anything, that you would never shine. You always seemed very malleable, easily influenced, too compassionate. They saw your, um, you know, empathy and compassion as a weakness instead of a strength. And you transformed. You became an empowered, inspired compassionate individual and you cut them out of your life as you naturally ascended beyond them and they are shocked by this. But let's see what the cards have to say. Okay, you've got the shepherd celebration and family and this might actually be family members that really didn't think that you were ever going to achieve anything. And there's the water symbol on this card as well. There's something about Maybe you were a person that um, was deeply in tune with your emotions and, and maybe they saw you as hypersensitive. Maybe they saw you as having your head in the clouds, um, that you were making wishes that were never going to come true, that you needed to get more practical, more grounded, that you were easily manipulated. Um, and that is no longer the case is the sense I get. Yes, life purpose. You've stepped into your purpose. You figured out who you are. There's something about you changing your perspective of life as above. So below is what's coming forward. And, and the tree of life always makes me think of the left and right brain, you know, the synapses firing in a different way that you no longer believe what the stories that they're telling you. You're not going to allow them to use you as the scapegoat is what's coming forward. You know, maybe you were a, a convenient villain. Like they didn't want to have to change anything about the way that they live their lives. And you seem like an easy target. So the entire family was like, you're the problem. Like this, this tree of life, you know, Yadrasil just really makes me think of the family trees as well. And like generations of individuals repeating patterns and 
destiny versus fate. Um, as I've mentioned in previous readings, sometimes those two concepts get twisted. So your fate are the events that are going to take place in your life that you have no control over. They are foundational. They have to happen. They are pillars that keep this whole system running because if they're not there, then it just boils down to complete chaos. We can't have just straight up free will because then we're going to end up being consumed by the lower vibrational, you know, energies and we won't progress. We won't learn because there's going to be no structure. We, we need to have structure. Um, but you also need to be able to have free will. And that is where your destiny comes into play. Destiny is doorways and pathways available to you if you choose them. And your family seems to see everything as faded, like everything is out of your hands. Like if you, if your family before you weren't able to succeed financially and gain abundance, then you won't be able to either. They, they really buy into that narrative. Like they are looking at the past to predict the future. And there is some, you know, truth in that, but it can be very self-limiting. And you have somehow embraced like, no, just because it's always been that way, it doesn't mean it always will be that way. And I am going to choose a different path. And if you don't like it, that's okay. This, I know what my purpose is. I know what my purpose is. I know who I am. I know why I'm here. And it's freaking shocking them. You, oh my God, you got financial health. You not only showed them that you are going to walk your path whether they like it or not, but you're succeeding. You are succeeding. It might just be small right now. Not all of you have reached that pinnacle of success, but you are on your way. You know, like you have at least climbed up to those first rung of branches in this beautiful money tree and you're on your way. All you have to do is continually, you know, lean into your truth and listen to your intuition. And they are shocked. Like you might be doing something that's really unconventional, really different. Um, you might be doing things that actually your family members always wanted to do. And they're actually trying to sabotage you because they wanted that to be their life. If they see you succeed at what they wanted to accomplish, they will feel a great amount of shame. Like one, they'll wonder, could I have made it happen for myself? And then they'll feel potentially a lot of jealousy because they'll convince themselves, no, I could never have had that. And it wasn't meant for me. So why is the universe so unjust? When in that's not reality at all. They they not only could have that, they could still have it if it's their path. You know, like oftentimes we get confused between what our path is and what society is trying to convince us is like the right path forward towards happiness. And it looks like you're not, you're very clear. You're very clear on like what your path is, where you're supposed to go. And the rewards that are coming to you are meant for you. And they are giving you exactly what you need to have personal satisfaction and fulfillment is what's coming forward. So it definitely looks like it's some money that's come to you, some material rewards but it could be so much more than that. Patience, be patient and allow destiny to unfold at its own pace. So you might have been working on this aspiration, achieving this goal for a really long period of time. And that might've been why your family was like, what are you doing? You're never gonna make it. Why are you still at this? But you were like, no, I know this is my path. I know that this is what I'm meant to do. But I do get the sense that there's only one way you could have resolved that. There's only one way that you could have gotten the energy moving forward again. 
you would have had to not only step into your past, but you would have had to cut ties with all of the illusions that are connected to the material world. An example is, for some of you, you might want to be successful musicians. Well, society will paint this picture that, yeah, you want to be a rock star, you want to be famous, you want to have groupies, you want to have millions of dollars. And, you know, when you're not in that energy, you might think, oh yeah, that sounds amazing. That's the life I want. But you're not thinking about like the sacrifice that comes along with that. You're not necessarily thinking about the fact that you have no personal space, that, you know, you're under pressure at all times to conform to some idea that's outside of yourself, that, you know, people around you, you can't trust because they're constantly trying to take something from you, whether it's money or they want prestige or whatever it is. And it looks like for you on your path, you've cut ties with all of that. You're saying, I'm patient. I know that the universe is going to deliver to me exactly what I need, what is owed to me. And I'm going to just continually work towards it. And I'm not going to try and get outcomes that only leads to more suffering is what's coming forward or that or feeds back into the same system where there's the haves and the have nots. You're disconnecting from that. If you end up having more than another person, you trust that that is because that's what spirit wants of you, but you have no aspirations for you to have everything and everyone else to have nothing. And that's because you're a beautiful, empathetic, compassionate person. And the wealth that is bestowed on you is in the right hands. And that's exactly why spirit wants you to have it. So whatever you achieve, whatever you receive, you deserve it and, and embrace that. Shield, you need to defend yourself. Yes, you must be starting to defend yourself against family or your community and you're starting to say, no, I can achieve anything. I am powerful. I, I know what my purpose is. This is my path. I'm going to do it. I'm not going to let you like tear me down. And I'm going to distance myself from you if you keep doing that. You are protecting yourself from, I get the sense more than just like the naysaying. It's like on an energetic level, like you, it's like you have this protective shield around you. So like evil eye energy. And for those of you who don't know what the evil eye is, it's basically when people are thinking negative thoughts about you or spreading rumors and gossip about you, like all of that energy can influence us because we're all energetic beings are all connected. So you have to be mindful of that and protect yourself from that energy so it doesn't throw off your equilibrium. And, and you're doing that and it's shocking people. Basically, they're trying to manipulate you and it's not working. You got the eccentricity card and it's got Saturn and Aquarius card number 11. 11, master number, is connected back to divine purposes. Saturn, hard taskmaster, having to learn karmic lessons. Aquarius, forward thinking, um, you know, looking at where we could go in terms of society and systems and best practices is what's coming forward. So like you might just have a lot of amazing ideas and others have had a hard time wrapping their minds around it. And you might have felt like, when am I going to get my break? Like, how long can I work on building this up before eventually I just surrendered to the fact that it's never going to happen? And it's like at that moment when you want to quit, that's when the abundance comes in. That's when the miracles come in. Like, you are more magical than you realize. There's a mermaid on this card. You're much more magical than you realize. Um, the more you recognize your own divine power to grow things of all types through love is what's coming forward, the more you will see dramatic changes happening in your world and that will equally shock the people around you. And you've got health, card number six, 
the sun in Virgo. So you might have had some declining health in the past and you've you've completely turned things around. Maybe you got rid of vices. Maybe you started to work out and eat healthy um, or it's mental health. You've just overcome things like you're no longer struggling the way that you did in the past when there was so much toxicity. There's There was so much, you know, naysaying and like belittling and this energy of, of lack around you. And I get the sense that you're empathetic, compassionate individual, divinely inspired and connected with spirit on a profound level to like build something here. And all of that toxicity around you just completely threw things off. And now people are gravitating towards you or possibly you're aligning with different experiences, maybe even different healing modalities that are helping to bring in that equilibrium. And they're, it's just shocking. Like you, you seem to be glowing now. And, and this might, once again, I'm being told that for some of you out there, you haven't, you haven't even fully realized that this has happened. Other people are seeing it and you're not, you don't, you don't fully see it because of course you haven't completely cut the ties with a lot of this negativity yet. So for some of you, you might actually want to do a ritual, like a cord cutting. You can do this with a person, uh, an event, a circumstance in your life. Basically what you want to do is you have two candles. One would represent you. One would represent whatever it is that you're trying to let go of. You want to put it, I like to like put my candles in metal candle holders because I want the candle to burn all the way down and I don't want to have like any risks of fire or anything. And I put it on a bed of salt so that everything, no matter what happens with the flame or the dripping of the candle, everything is safe and protected. And you wrap this string around both candles. You light them with the intention that you are severing the connection and thing, the candles will burn down. Eventually it'll reach the cord. You should pay attention to what happens when that cord lights up because it can give you some really profound messages by watching the behavior of the flame and the cord. But eventually the cord will cut as a result of the fire and you'll be released from that. So that is one way of doing it. There's plenty of others that you can look up online, but that might be something that you want to try. Then you received rue, regret, and repentance. You have shifted away from this energy. You are not feeling regret. You're not asking yourself like, oh, am I damaged? Am I the problem? Is everything my fault? Um, you know, you might have had or still have some things in the past that you wish that you had done differently. I'm not saying that you don't have any regrets in life, but you're not allowing it to hold you back. And I think that there is some energy that you might have had holding you back um, that wasn't for you. You know, it was projections. It was like these self-limiting beliefs are like the belief and dedication to a generational curse. Like, you know, just because it didn't work out in the past doesn't mean it won't work out in the future. Just because it didn't work out for great grandma doesn't mean it won't work out for you. You know, like different lives, different circumstances, different lessons, different time. Like it, it, it doesn't matter what happened before. Anything can change if you want it to. Then you receive the six of wands. Yes, victory. You are shocking people because you're no longer, you have dealt with your pain. You're willing to look at the things that you need to shift and change. You're willing to take accountability. You're going to take action. You are taking action. You're getting your health in check. You're taking bold moves. You're moving forward. You're having patience with the process, but you are moving ahead with your grand ideas, 
protecting yourself from the toxic energy around you and you are finding success. It is working. If it's not completely there yet, believe me, you, you're, this is just the tip of the iceberg. Massive success and changes are on their way to you. And it could be money, but it could be a lot of other things that you will value as much, if not more, than actual dollars. Then you received a new romantic cycle begins. New moon in Libra. Balance is coming into your life. Beautiful things growing. Maybe a new romantic cycle. Maybe a new romance is coming in. But this could also be talking about a new partnership, new friends, new chosen family new renewed connections with family members. Because if you have been sort of belittled or bullied in your family, I guarantee there's other family members that have experienced the same kinds of, you know, barriers. And they just were too afraid to come out and say anything because they felt like they were all on their own. And you're going to have a new renewed friendship or a new relationship with them as well. Maybe even people from the past that you lost contact with that you love and that you had a good relationship with might come back into your life as well. Like, and I'm not talking about toxic exes and stuff. I'm like talking about, you know, you worked with someone when you were in your late teens, early 20s, and you went, ended up going to different schools, and you sort of lost touch, and then all of a sudden, you run into them somewhere, and it's like, oh my god, I've been thinking about you, and you, you know, renew your friendship, that kind of thing is what I'm talking about, not like bad people coming back, and it being different, it's like a renewal, carrying on where you left off in the most positive way, so to conclude your reading, what I want to do is give you some additional guidance on things that you need to be mindful of, things that you might see as obstacles or barriers. Uh, I'm going to also give you some guidance on things you can lean into just so you have the information that you need to really be able to chart your course through this and find the most success that you possibly can. So what does pile number three need to be wary of or, okay, the card that you received is alone in the world. If you are at a point right now where you feel like you're alone, spirit wants you to know you're not alone. You might feel that way because you're being raw and authentic. You're being very like vulnerable and naked to the world, but that is what's going to be bringing in your community. There's balance in the number six, divine masculine, divine feminine, you know, the tree of life, as above, so below. There's like, there's this balance, the Libra as well. There's this balance that's coming forward for you. And it's your willingness to be raw and vulnerable and authentic that is going to allow people to see you because you already know this, you're very different. And that is exactly the way that you're supposed to be. You're not supposed to be like everyone else. You're supposed to be the inspiration. You're supposed to be the one that charts the course forward with the Aquarius. But it can be a lonely road to begin with. So don't fall into this illusion that you're actually alone. You're not alone and your guides and your ancestors are with you at all times. And, and you know, you might want to tap into that. You might have clear cognizance, which is the gift of clear knowing. It's one of my strongest gifts. Like you'll just know things you don't know how. That's likely what was so triggering to your family because you would see all of their insecurities, all their secrets. Like it wasn't a secret, like they couldn't keep anything from you because you'd be able to read it in the energy of their being deceptive. You'd be able to notice the micro expressions on their faces and you would know if something was off or they're lying or whatever it is. Um, and you know, they would try and shame you for it, but there are others out there like you. So keep doing whatever it is that you love doing because that's how you're going to find these people. Let's see if there's another. Oh, you've got gilded regret. Okay, interesting. 
So Gilded Regret is talking about um, getting all of the rewards out of life, like getting fame and money and power, whatever your definition of like success and, and you know, abundance is um, in a material sense. Getting all of that and still feeling empty. It's its like it didn't heal the wound. It didn't fill me up. Um, and having conflict with that, with the number five. Like, be mindful of why you are doing this. Don't fall for the trap of, well, if I do this, everyone is going to be so jealous or impressed. Or everyone's going to shower affection on me. Um, they may they may not. And, you know, when you rise up to a really high pinnacle, there's a long way to fall too. So make sure that you're doing it because you love it, that you would do it even if no one noticed you. All you want is to be able to be independent and have the means to be able to continue doing this for as long as you feel like doing it. That should be the goal. So, be wary of what, be, you know, be careful what you wish for is what your guides want you to know. Be careful what you wish for. Make sure that you know exactly what you're asking for because you are going to receive it. And there might be things that you want based on more ego um, or conditioning that won't actually serve you the way that you think. So it's just something that you have to ask yourself, right? Okay, so now I'd like to find out what can you lean into? What can you trust in? What is going to be a benefit to you as you chart your path forward? Let's get one more. Okay. So, oh, no, oh my God, wild. Okay. So first of all, you got the commitment card and that's so insane because this card did come out in one of the other piles. So if you were guided to another pile, you might want to check that out. Number three, events. And then the deception card and it's number seven, also events. Okay, so the sense that I get is that you need to be leaning into the relationships with the people that are giving back to you in an authentic way. You have been surrounded by people in low vibrational states that send evil eye your way, gossip around you, they're two-faced, they, you know, try and convince you that they're your friend, and then they're telling you everything is, you know, that you're amazing, or like they're literally, like you think that they're your friend. And then they're going off and talking to somebody else and they're saying all sorts of negative things about you. It's like, to you, they say, you can make your dreams a reality. And then to somebody else, they're saying, I don't know what they're thinking. It's a terrible idea and they're never going to go anywhere with it. Like that kind of energy has plagued you is the sense that I get. But you have the ability at this point to now start investing in committed relationships. You're going to be shown two different types of people in various ways. And in a way, it's sort of a test because you're being given an opportunity to choose the people that will be energetically beneficial to you, healing. Um, so I can give you a tip. What you want to look for is people that practice what they preach. People that gossip or say negative things about others unprompted without reason and without any kind of focus on like there being uh, a conclusion, like they're not saying these things as like constructive criticism, they're just saying these things to knock somebody. Those are toxic people. Like it doesn't matter what they're saying to you. They might be saying, you're amazing. And it's all these other people that are the problem. But how quickly that can change. Where you are great with them today. And tomorrow you're the villain. And you're in that, you know, group along with all the other people they don't like. So be mindful of that. And also be mindful of people that 
make promises that they can't keep, where they say things to you and then their actions are something entirely different. You want to look for people that say something to you and they are consistently the same every time you're around them. They follow through with what they say. You know, it's not just words like these other people. They are committed. Now, these people are going to require more dedication and patience as the relationship builds. People that are in the deceptive energy will love bomb. They're like, oh, we're best friends. I love you so much. Everything is amazing. But then it's not rooted in like any real connection. So it's, it's more about projection and how you make them feel when you are appreciative of the things that they're doing and how you see them. It's like they, they don't have a strong sense of confidence. And so they need other people to tell them that they're amazing. And it's really a selfish act of what, like they might be giving to you, but it's a selfish act. So be mindful of that. Slow and steady wins the race. Put in the work. Allow somebody to slowly open up to you. Be patient and look for consistency. All right. So now to conclude the reading, what I would like to do is give your guides an opportunity to give you any final advice or guidance. So let's see what they have to say. Okay, so the first card that you've got is Resourcefulness, the um, Sun in Cancer, card number four. So you're very resourceful. There are things that are already in your orbit that you're going to be able to use to get further ahead on your path, you know, fulfilling your life purpose, to gain more resources, like the financial health, like remember that abundance is not only dollars that might be the resources of other people, the information, the support that they can provide you. It can be looking at the things you already have around you and seeing how you can shift them and you work with them in a different way. Like get creative. You, you've got the things that you need to get ahead. Um, now, I am looking at this, and there's this is a possibly a raven or a crow. I'm not sure. Blackbirds have been coming forward in, you know, this reading quite a bit um, in, like, the various piles. And they are messengers from the other side, and they can be connected to the underworld. So there might be a little bit of shadow work that's still necessary, for you to release, possibly connected to toxic relationships and like difficult relationships, challenging relationships, people that take you for granted. Just releasing that. You could possibly do that on your own. You might want to, you know, work with a professional that might be, you know, going and having a tarot card reading done. It could be going and having a therapy session done, but it does seem like looking at your own triggers or shadow could potentially empower you and make things move even faster. I don't get the sense that you're not going to get ahead. It just might be slower. Then you got indecision with um, Venus and Libra card number seven. Yeah, if you were like sort of back and forth trying to figure out, am I on the right path? Am I not on the right path? And it's because other people are influencing you. This is the shadow work that they're talking about, that you need to overcome that. You are on the right path. And those that are in the darkness will always try and steer you away from your own light because they don't know that that even exists. They actually see it as, oh my God, I see their light. There's something special just about you. And they don't even recognize that they have that within themselves. It's just so sad. So if you can confront that and, you know, integrate your shadow. The shadow is the aspect of self that we reject. It doesn't mean that it's, you know, something negative. It might be your greatest gifts. It might be this self-doubt around what you're supposed to be doing or how talented you are. There's something about going viral. So you might be posting, 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 and you're like, 
why am I getting like 30 views? You know, not that there's anything wrong with only getting 30 views, but you might be thinking, oh, I put in all of this energy and there's something about people laughing at you. Like maybe for some of you, you're feeling like people are ridiculing you or like laughing at you because they think that this is like a fool's errand. Like this is never going to go anywhere. No, that is this negative energy influencing you. You are putting in the work to build something that will last. If things that come quick, you can lose quick. Believe me, you want things to be built properly. Going back to this four, because that's the solid foundation. Whoa, final card you've got is birth with Venus, Cancer, card number four. You are rebirthing yourself. This is a brand new cycle that's coming into your life. You're going to be elevated. You get to shape who you're going to be. There will be pain involved in this to a certain degree, just like childbirth. Mothers go through extreme pain to give birth to their children, but it is worth it. It is worth it. And you're going to be going through this pain to a certain degree as well, integrating the masculine and feminine aspects of self, which we all have within us. And they have positives and they have shadow elements as well. And you're going to bring that into balance. You're going to align yourself with your higher self, the version of you that remembers all of your past lives and knows why you're here and and isn't influenced by shame because they see the greater picture and the greater purpose and they know what's going to happen in the future so they have no fear. You're going to tap into that and then everything is going to shift and change for you. So that concludes your reading. I hope you enjoyed it. This is so powerful. I can I can definitely see why people are shocked. And I like, honestly, I get the sense that, you know, this is just the beginning. They're going to be really shocked in the future. I would love to know what you guys thought, how this relates to you. Definitely let me know in the comments. Um, and I do do private readings. If any of you are interested in working with me, you can go to my website, odessamall.com. I do tarot card readings, of course, but I also do lots of other things and you can check all of that out on my website. So I hope you enjoyed this. I look forward to seeing you in the next reading.